hey again so <sighs> totally just felt super inspired <laughs> it may just be a flow of inspiration going right now so i'm going with it um so you can tell by the title of this video that this is mainly for the women this time around it's about my experience with completely being off of birth control for a total of two years and I think I want to continue to do do this because again you don't see very many updates on people not using birth control you always see them come out when they stop using it and they show you their fancy apps and their thermometers and the book you know or books um, and then you rarely ever see what happens after that do they stick to it you know what are their experiences and still to this day I do get questions on both my original first video and then my second video as well and so I'm just like clearly people still want to know they want to know okay you've been doing this a while are you still doing it you don't really talk about it much what about children do you think you're gonna have children um, you know are you afraid to have sex what happened to your period did it ever come back did you know did you make any more changes and all of those different kinds of questions so I basically want to address those today and I want to share with you how I currently practice my fertility method if I still follow it to the book and all of that fun stuff so I'm gonna try to keep this one pretty short and sweet um, I think the first one I made was pretty a pretty good amount of time and the second one I made was like 20 minutes so I'm gonna try to stay under 15 um, but I also want to make sure that I truly do give you guys some helpful tips helpful knowledge um, and wisdom from just me experiencing, you know, not being on birth control. Uh, so the first thing I want to say is to give your body time. Um, it's been two years for me since I got off of birth control, meaning, um, and I'll just recap really quickly, but I'll also link the two videos below, but I did have the Nexplanon implant bar for three years, but prior to that I was on birth control pills. Um, and then when I took the bar out, I was on birth control pills again. I don't remember for how long, maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe a month or two. And then I just stopped taking them. Um, and then three months later, I made my first video. So I technically stopped taking birth control in January of 2016. Uh, so my videos all kind of come out at weird times. You know, the first one was in March because I wanted to make sure I had some good, you know, cycles under my belt to be able to talk about it. And then my two year one was I think in like January and then this one's in February. So either way, it's still been two years. Um, so yes, giving your body time to heal um, is the biggest one. Patience is huge, it is key. It's taken my body almost two years to be able to clear out the amount of extra estrogen and just hormones that were just rampaging my body and I finally did get a what you would call a normal cycle um, so I did begin getting my period in I believe October of 2017 um, and there's a little story behind that um, which I'll share about and how I kind of practice now um, but it did my cycle did come back um, it was a very heavy flow um, so I think it lasted like a week and a half and you know that's pretty much how my flow was during this two year period it would just come every three months and so I wasn't sure at this moment if it was going to continue coming every month or not um, particularly during the new moon phase is when my cycle starts and so November came and I got my cycle again and I was like, okay, this is two cycles in a row. This is freaking awesome. December came, I got my cycle again. And I was like, okay, this is, this is creating a rhythm here. Even my mom was in shock. She was like, oh no, you're getting fertile. You better be careful. <laughs> um, and then actually January came and I freaked out a little bit only because my period didn't come and I was like, oh no. You know, is it starting this thing again where it's going to be irregular? I didn't, I wasn't sure what was going on. Um, and then this month, my period came perfectly fine with this new moon. And so 
The conclusion I came to with January, and this is something that I knew in the moment when the thoughts came to my mind, but I wanted to wait until this month to really kind of confirm with myself. But because we had two full moons in January, it threw my cycle off. Um, because my my body likes to have a certain amount of time before it begins to bleed and so with just how the moons fell it wasn't a complete cycle for me and um, actually I noticed a lot of different women saying how they got their period twice in January and um, yeah I, I would not have <laughs> would not have wanted that to happen so I'm actually pretty happy that my cycles kind of skipped a cycle I guess you can say um, because again, we had three major moon phases. You had one new moon and two full moons in, in January. And so that did kind of throw it off a little bit. Um, so patience is key. My cycle has continued to come every new moon, um, minus January because of the two full moons. And it took a lot of patience, like patience. And the second thing I really want to say is getting in tune with your body realize that the fertility awareness method is a tool okay so it's it's awesome it's an awesome tool the fertility awareness method is an awesome amazing tool um, to really begin to get you on that path to knowing your body but at some point you have to release the need to use the tools you have to release the dependency on the tools so that you can actually use the wisdom that you already have within you um, so for me, I no longer use a thermometer. I don't check my temperature every day at all. I don't check it at all in the morning. Um, I don't check my cervical mucus, you know, every day anymore. Um, I just can naturally tell what's going on with my body. I can tell when I'm getting ready to ovulate. I can tell when my cycle is getting ready to come, which is why in January I knew nothing was happening because I was like, okay, this isn't normal. I'm not experiencing, you know, the normal energies that I experience when my cycle is about to begin. Um, which for me, I usually just get a little more tired and I step back and I rest. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was just, it was very, it's, it's been a very interesting journey, but to understand that this is meant to be a tool for you to really understand your body, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to be able to understand, oh, this is my body is acting this way in this moment to alert me, to let me know that I'm getting ready to release an egg, you know, or that I'm getting ready to bleed. And it even goes deeper than that because honestly, at the end of the day, bleeding is not necessarily a normal thing. It's normal in our society because of how we eat. Um, you know, standard American diet, standard Western diet, right? Where you have your meat and your dairy, um, cooked foods, a lot of those things create a lot of toxins within our bodies. And so the woman bleeding every month is actually a form of hemorrhaging. It's a way for your body to kind of try to clear out toxins every month. And, um, once you've kind of gotten your body to a point where you've cleaned yourself out, you'll find that your period goes from being maybe seven to 10 days. Can you guys hear the bird on my air conditioning unit? Oh my God, it's so freaking amazing. <laughs> um, your period may go from being seven to 10 days to being five days, four days, three days, two days, one day. It may all of a sudden, next thing you know, it's a couple drops. And then maybe you don't really get anything. And Women, most women these days will say, okay, well, that's not normal. You can't have you can't have children and not have a period. Well, I can tell you there are many, many women who have children, are very healthy, no period whatsoever. And a lot of the times it's because their body is just, it's clean. It's functioning the way it's meant to be. It's optimally functioning. Um, so that's my update as far as where I'm moving towards. I've gotten my cycle to where it's consistent, uh, meaning I know my body's consistently cleaning out. I'm also watching and observing my periods to see how much am I bleeding? How long am I bleeding for? Um, what symptoms am I having? Am I experiencing premenstrual symptoms? And if so, what is my body alerting me to? 
Um, those birds are so freaking cute. <laughs> um, what is my body alerting me to? And so I've noticed each time that my cycle gets a little bit shorter, a little less heavy. Um, this cycle has actually been a lot more different than my last three cycles. Um, I've had a bit more cramping this time around, but my bleeding has been a lot less. Sorry if this is TMI. I'm not going to show you guys anything, but it's been a, it's actually been a lot less than what it normally typically has been in the last three cycles. And so that tells me something because I've been making changes within my diet as well. Um, that brings me to the next thing. So I said patience and realizing that the fertility awareness method is a tool for you to be able to get in tune with yourself. Um, my third thing is making dietary changes. If you're somebody who experiences irregular periods, first off, I would suggest, I'm not a doctor, so let me, let me just say that. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a naturopath, I'm not a anybody that is certified to give professional advice. I'm sharing advice based off of my own experience and the experience of countless other women that I have personally read um, about them, you know, on this same journey of cleaning out their bodies and really listening. Um, so my experience is if you are experiencing hormone imbalance of any kind, whether your period is regular but it's very heavy or very painful, or you don't have a regular cycle, or your period is not coming and you know something is not right within your body. You're holding weight in your gut. You know, you're holding on to weight in general, or maybe you can't seem to gain any weight. You know, a lot of that is hormone imbalance. You know, hormones are very, very, very picky, okay? <laughs> They're very picky. And your body does its best to try to keep everything in balance. But when you continue to practice habits that are harming your body, your body is going to try to compensate as best as it can, but it's only going to be able to do what it can do because you're not working with it. So number one, if you're on birth control, my experience says to get off of it. If you are eating animal products, I'm not going to include honey, at least not raw honey because I do consume raw honey, um, but I'm talking meat and dairy. If you're consuming those two things, let it go. Processed foods, let it go. And then, you know, just continue to work your way. It doesn't have to be an overnight thing. You can cut out one thing at a time. You can do meat and dairy all at once. That's what I did in September. Um, I remember in my January video, I said, oh, I really want to change my dietary habits. It took me eight months to finally make that switch. September 1st, I went vegan and I never turned back. As far as vegan's the best terminology that I can really say, um, only because I do eat honey and you know, most vegans will say, oh, well that's harming the bees and yada, yada, yada. Um, but there are amazing benefits to things like bee pollen and, and honey and things like that. Um, and so I feel as long as you're not harming the bees, you know, so you need to make sure obviously that you're getting it from a reputable source. Anyways, that's a whole new video. But when I went vegan in September, my whole life changed. October, my period came back because my body was being alerted that I'm now putting in foods that are helping to cleanse because now uh, for one my digestion isn't taxed as harsh as it was before by eating meat and dairy because meat and dairy are some of the hardest things for our bodies to digest um, especially you know being pasteurized and cooked and all of that stuff um, very very hard for our bodies to digest and digestion takes a lot of energy and so if you're eating meat and dairy it can take your body upwards of eight to ten hours just to move that through your your actual digestion process and then it just sits in your gut and then what happens is your gut your intestines get full of shit literally and it begins to actually i want to say like weigh down on your 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 ovaries and your whole female reproductive system down there um, your intestines will actually pretty much spill over into that which is why you tend to have a a gut, a hangover gut, that belly pudge that never goes away. 
it's because you have a lot of shit in there that's stuck um, and so that puts a tax on your female reproductive system as well and so when you begin to eat lighter foods meaning mainly plants and veggies you can add in grains and things like that um, but really the main thing is cutting out the, the animal products right so you cut out the animal products, you make digestion a little bit easier for yourself. And so your body is able to kind of digest the foods a little bit quicker. And so now it has some more energy that it can actually use to clean out. And so you'll notice because you're eating more fiber, you're eating, you know, more life giving foods, you will begin to poop more. You will begin to notice that your body cleans out more. Your armpits may stink. Your breath may stink. You'll notice mucus coming out of you in many areas that you didn't realize mucus could come out of. You may even realize that your vagina area is releasing things that you were like, okay, what the heck is going on down there? Um, and each time you make a change in your diet, you're going to experience this because every time you eat lighter and lighter foods, your body is, is able to digest them quicker and take that extra energy and be able to actually use it to clean your body out. So a major thing would be changing your diet, getting off the pill, and getting in tune with your body. The fertility awareness method is a tried and true method. Women have been doing it for years and successfully. And I think the issue is a lot of women, a lot of us grow up and we're not really taught much about our body. We have our little sex, sex education class and that's about it. And our parents don't usually really talk too deep about it, you know, um, because it's awkward to have that kind of conversation. Um, and a lot of times our parents weren't really taught either and so they don't really know what to teach you and so it's really up to you to go out and to learn for yourself stop relying on a doctor to tell you what's going on with your female reproductive system you know your doctor does not live in your body your doctor is going to do the best they can with the knowledge that they've learned and the tools that they have to try to discern something but also remember that a lot of doctors are trained to fix things with medicine. They're not really trained to get to the root of the issue. They're trained to heal the symptom. And so it really has to be up to you to take charge of your fertility. So I still stand by the Taking Charge of Your Fertility book by Tony Weschler. I still have the book to this day and I still reference it time to time. Um, but start there. Start with the information that's at least going to help you be able to track yourself and observe yourself there's many many apps out now there's even apps that come with thermometers i went to cvs and i got a basal thermometer um basal b-a-s-a-l um and it's a thermometer that you know goes like 98.06 you know it won't just give you 98.6 it goes to two tenths um, of the decimal so um, get yourself a thermometer get yourself an app and begin to track those things track things like your temperature um, your cervical mucus. It doesn't mean you have to stick your fingers up there. You can look at your panty liner or your panties, you know, whether you wear panties or not, I don't know. But you, you know what mucus is coming out of you. You know how it feels when you feel wet and moist down there, when you feel more dry. You know, observe that. Observe your emotions. Observe things like cramping. How is your cramping? Do you have any cramping? Do your boobs get tender? You know, does your back begin to hurt? Do you get irritable and sleepy? You know, do, do your emotions kind of go on a whole twisty turn? You know, observe all of these things. And this video is totally longer than 15 minutes, but I don't give a crap because I'm hoping this helps somebody. Um, so observe those things and observe and use those tools until they're no longer necessary. There is no set timeline. I'm not gonna tell you, oh, in three months, stop using the tools or in six months stop using the tools stop using the tools whenever you're ready it took me a year and a half before i really stopped using the tools so use the tools for as long as you feel that you need to and then when you no longer feel it's necessary you'll know because you'll naturally begin to stop checking your temperature so often you'll start to forget to check it and you won't be like constantly checking your phone to see when your period's coming or to see, you know, if you updated your observations, like you'll naturally begin to kind of just wean yourself off of using the tools and go with that. Don't ever feel like, oh, I've been slacking. I got to get I got to get back on track. Like, no, that's usually a sign that you're actually getting very in tune with yourself and that it's time to take the leap and actually trust yourself. So 
that would be my best advice. Get off the pills, get off the hormones, and change your diet and get in tune with yourself and use the tool, the fertility awareness method, or whatever natural method you decide to use, because I know there's other names like natural family, family planning is one as well. Um, but use the tools until they're no longer necessary. And from there, continue to educate yourself. Don't just stop at taking charge of your fertility. Begin to actually learn about how your body works. Begin to learn about what your body actually needs. Begin to research and experiment on yourself. Remove certain foods from your diet and then see how they affect you. Um, that's like, honestly, the best thing I can share with you because I look back, I even I looked back at my videos um, my first video, my second video, and I can see the difference in my skin, I can see the difference in my body, um, in my weight, you know, I was very, very overweight, I was over, I don't know, I've lost over 30 pounds at this point, um, and I can totally feel the difference in my body. And in those two videos, I was wearing makeup. I don't wear makeup anymore. And I feel like my skin looks amazing compared to how it used to. I used to cover it up um, with tons of products. My skin was super dry back then. Um, so I used to cover it up with um, thick cream to make my skin look like it had a natural glow. And I would put on, you know, products to give my face some shadow and some some highlight and all of that stuff, you know, the whole contouring thing. I would do all of that um, so that it would look like I was super healthy. And now it's like, no, I actually look healthy. You know, I can actually see, begin to see like my collarbones, my decollete, whatever you call it, um, where before I couldn't see that. Fat here has disappeared. You know, my stomach is going down more and more. You know, it's just, to be able to see these changes because I continue to experiment, I continue to trust myself and listen to my body. And when my body said, no more meat, no more meat. Um, so, yeah, my cycle is back. Um, it's been back since October. Uh, my foot fell asleep, oh my God, and it tickles so bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm moving, I'm continuing to move in a really strong direction. Um, I'm continuing to experiment on myself, experiment on myself, and I'm continuing to learn. Um, and primarily at this point, learning by listening to my body. And so when my body begins to crave things naturally, I go and I get those things. So um, for those of you who may not know, I did go raw in November of 2017. Um, and I did stop eating raw in December. So I went about three and a half weeks, I believe, um, or maybe three weeks of eating raw. And then I stopped. And I stopped because I gave into cravings and then it went downhill from there. <laughs> uh, I was still vegan the entire time, but I did begin eating cooked food. And so for me at this point, um, I have begun listening to my body again um, because in that moment when I decided to eat cooked food and to kind of get off the raw diet, I was listening to my mind versus my heart, my actual body telling me what it needed. And so now I'm transitioning back into raw. And that's something that I'll talk about in my diet update video where I'll go a little bit more in depth. Um, but I did want to mention that now as well. Um, so you guys have that to look forward to as a video update coming, coming your way. But yeah, I'm continuing to update um, and change and evolve. And so I'm expecting to see my period get lighter and lighter and shorter and shorter. And I'm going to keep you guys updated on that as well. Um, and hopefully come to the point, maybe it's just a few drops or not at all. <laughs> um, as far as children goes, because I know that's a question I get a lot too. Um, I'm at the point where if I am to have children in my lifetime, then I know that they will naturally come when it's meant to. Um, but that's not a thought on my mind right now. I'm more focused on making sure that I get myself together before I actually bring another life into this world. So I wanted to make sure I address that question because I do get that question quite a bit. Um, and I do not have any fear about getting pregnant at all. Um, I trust myself 100%. So. Yeah, I hope that that answered a lot of questions that I get. 
Um, I hope that that was deep enough to help some of you guys who may have started your, um, your healing journey as far as your reproduction system goes, that part of you, that womb area of yours that is so important and is a huge part of who we are as women in our physical bodies. Um, I hope that that's helped you whether you're beginning your journey or whether you're thinking about this journey or whether you've been on it for a while and you needed some encouragement. I do hope that I was able to provide some of that for you and shed some light and maybe get you inspired. Um, so I love you and I will see you in my next video. And yeah, stay blessed. Bye.